Oh, look. Let's buy this shit for 20 cents on the dollar. Let's see. On the right, we have Optimus Prime. On the middle, we have a BGS-10 Beta Mount Sapphire. And on the left, we have a Beta Black Lotus 9.5. What do you think is worth more? The price is right. Well, according to Rudy, the most valuable item today is Optimus Prime. This piece of shit toy is worth more than this crap because the percentage he's offering is crap. Oh, wait a second. This is what I think about Rudy's latest video. Watch the entire video coming up. If you want the best prices, if you want the best prices, if you want the best prices, go to VintageMagic.com. Vintage, we, we clean our toys. We clean everything. We make sure everything is clean. 40 cents on the dollar. I don't care. Waterproof level. I will clean. I will pay you 29.69.69 cents to the dollar. What's a BS, Rudy? Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. If you're new, hit subscribe, hit notifications, and for some awesome Magic the Gathering videos, this is the new uh, type of videos that I'm going to do. They're kind of response videos. First off, I don't have the green screen set up. I'm not a gamer guy where I have like my head sticking out and then there's like a big screen behind me. Not going to do that. I'm basically going to cut it off. I do no editing in my videos other than just putting the videos together. So it's what you see, what you get type of thing. So this video is going to be all about Rudy's recent video regarding Magic Gathering vintage cards. Uh, basically, he thinks they're going to go for a free fall, a free, free fall. And this is based off the Star City Games essentially eliminating their buy list on vintage Magic Gathering cards. Which you're actually going to do a little research because the big three companies I would look at are Star City Games, uh, not Channel Fireball, Star City Games, ABU Games, and Card Kingdom. So we're going to look at all three websites, and we're also going to look at his video. Uh, this video will probably be a little bit, a little bit longer than normal, but that's what these videos are meant to be. Uh, there might be some entertainment, uh, but most of it is going to be some meats and potatoes about how to. Kind of, you know, is Rudy saying it right? Is he saying it wrong? Uh, or is there a gray area? I always want to hear your comments below. Please put your comments below. Let me know what you think about the videos. And we'll do more of these. Maybe with different YouTubers other than Rudy. But uh, I wish you guys the best. Let's watch the videos. All right, guys. Welcome back. So this is the Star City Card Kingdom Channel Fireball Halt Vintage Buying Video. I will put the link in below by Rudy from Alpha Investments. Let's start the video and we'll pause as we go and see what we think here. Welcome back everybody, Rudy with Alpha Investments. Um, very, very serious video today. Um, I want to acknowledge a couple things. One thing that I was really wrong about because I never thought I'd see the day, uh, I want to go ahead and address that front and center. And that is the people always said, you know, magic is not liquid. Rudy, don't listen to Rudy, he's wrong. Rudy says magic has, you can always sell, there's always a market for it. Um, well, I'm wrong. I can honestly tell you guys that was flat out wrong. I got it wrong. And I never thought I'd live to see the day where, as of the filming of this video, for example, Star City Games has completely pulled down the buy list for alpha, beta, power, high-end, old-school magic cards. They are not taking any. Period. The demand for people selling out is so hot, they're out. They literally said we're out. And I'm assuming Card Kingdoms would do the same thing if you hit probably Alpha, Beta, Mox, Emerald, Mox, Jet, Ancestor Reef. All right. So first off, Rudy says that Card Kingdom uh, or Star City Games, uh, Channel Fireball, all those guys, or I'm sorry, Star City Games pulled down their buy list. So let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, I haven't done this for a while on this, so let's take a look. Let's see if he's full of crap or not. All right, so let's take a look. 
Star City Games. Log in. You can get the login here. Give me a second. The website crashed. Page expired. Hold on a second. All right, and we're back. I don't know. Page expired. Something happened. Crashed there. All right, hit sell your cards right there. I'm logged in, I think. And there we go. So let's take a look at what Rudy's. I'm just going to do one example. I'm just going to type in Black Lotus. You can type in any Lotus, anything you want. I'm also going to pull up ABU Games just for shits and giggles. I'm also put up cardkingdom.com. Okay, so follow me if you wish. Doesn't matter. Buy list is on the very top for ABU games. I'm going to type in uh, card names. Black. Well, that's dumb. What is wrong with this thing? I don't know what's going on. Okay. Black Lotus, whatever. So. All right. So let's see. Uh, I don't know how card, I don't see the reality guys is later in this video, I will explain, but in my opinion, here's star city sell cards. I am not a fan of buy lists. Never been, never will, never will happen. And the reason why is because I think they're obsolete and I'll go through that here in a second. All right. So let's go to Scar kingdom and we typed in buy list. All right. So. As Rudy says, as in the filming of this video, I think this video that he posted about, he had was about two or three days ago. Uh, the video for Rudy was uh, March 27th. Today is March 29th. Okay, there's three items here on here. Four. Yes. Unlimited is they're still buying near mint once for six thousand dollars. Played is a whopping four. HP is three. There's no alpha or beta. So in his video, he said ABU. I don't know. Maybe they changed it. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I bet it's not even. It's so high. They're out. They literally are alpha, beta, power, high end, old sample. Star City Games has completely pulled down the buy list. For alpha, beta, power, high-end, old-school magic cards. They mm. Let's go to his wording. So Rudy says that Star City pulled alpha, beta, and power 9. So obviously power 9 is considered unlimited in this case. So if that's the case, it's, it's there. Then basically, I mean, I don't know what he's looking at. Either I need glasses. It says unlimited. All right. Anyway, whatever. So they're paying uh, 6K for that. Let's go to ABU Games. ABU Games. Whoa. They're buying. They're buying power. I mean, am I am I right or wrong? I, I mean, so what they're buying is I'll go for near mint prices. Here's the mint, near mint, played HP. They're paying $35,000 cash for an alpha near mint alpha lotus, $19,500 for a beta near mint. Unlimited is $5,265. And their trade is double, by the way. That's how they do it. Their near mint is $21,000 for alpha, $12,285 for beta, and $3861 for near mint. So they have a four tiered schedule. And you can go through this yourself. Let's look at Card Kingdom. All right, Card Kingdoms is a little bit more, uh, a little interesting. Let's focus this. Sorry, guys. I don't have the green screen like fancy gamers do. All right, Alpha, they have uh, 44K, 6,600. So they're more than Star City by $600. These are near mint prices. And Beta is, yeah, Beta, they don't have it. They don't have it. Maybe they did I, why would they have alpha, not beta? Interesting. Okay. All right. That's interesting. But normally they do, right? Normally they do. All right. Let's go back to Rudy's video. Let's continue. They're not taking any, period. The demand for people selling out is so hot, they're out. They literally said we're out. 
And I'm assuming Card Kingdoms would do the same thing if you hit probably Alpha, Beta, Mox, Emerald, Mox, Jet, Ancestor Recall. I bet it's not even on there. Same thing with Channel Fireball. We are seeing a major downturn crash, and the vintage market could be in a complete disastrous free fall state. I, I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, so I want to acknowledge that because I always preach on this channel that sealed product, old school magic cards, there's always going to be a market. They're liquid. And I genuinely was wrong about that because for the first time in my 27 years of being in the magic world, I've never seen anything like this. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, Rudy, 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 calm down. The stores are closed because of what's going on in the world. They're just not open. They're not taking. Of course, they're, the buy list is down. No, no, you guys are wrong. The buy lists are still up. You can go to Star City or Card Kingdom or anywhere on the website you want to go to, ABU Games, everything. The buy list exists. It's on. But the high-end, expensive, old-school Magic cards have been manually removed. They're, the buy list is still in place. You can still send orders. They're still processing and paypal people. All right, let's stop there. Let's go to Star City real quick. Let's pick a random old-school card. Let's pick our good Saren Dib Ifrit. Right? Arabian Nights? Are they buying? Oh, yes, they're buying for $200 for a near mint. A plate is $140. HP is $90. Let's go to ABU Games. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I, 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 I'm really, really, really confused. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's seeing some other insider trading stuff. Uh, ABU Games. Buy list is $214 for mint. Uh, one seventy. I mean, it's still there. And let's go to Card Kingdom. Uh, I don't know. Saren did Ifrit. Okay. Let's see. Arabian Nights is oh oh Card Kingdom. No item. Whoa, that's a little interesting. Let's go to like uh Library of Alexandria. These are higher impact cards. I do this on purpose. They are buying. Near Mint Alexandria's for $495, $495. Holy moly. They've adjusted it like crazy. All right, so let's go to uh, Juzan Dijin. On, I, I think ABU Games pretty much has everything. Yeah, they're buying at $663. Let's go to, uh, let's go here. Let's go to another one. Let's go to, uh, let's go Mishra's Workshop. Okay, workshop. Let's see if Star City is buying that old school card. Vintage. Yep, $650. What? What's going on here? Is Rudy full of shit? Let's go to Living Wall. For the love of God. Living Wall. Oh. They're not buying Alpha. but they're So he did say Alpha or Beta. But he's at a limited for a dollar. They want a limited for a dollar. Interesting. I bet you ABU Games wants to buy it. Yep, I bet you. Yep. $29. Holy crap, that's cheap from before. Living Wall. Yep, they're buying at $35 and there's no beta. So a trend I'm seeing here is no beta really for Card Kingdom. No, uh, uh, the, uh, ABU Games is buying everything. All sets. Uh, Star City varies. All right, let's go back to the video. So, um, we are actually at a point where the amount of people trying to sell out of the old cards and the amount of people contacting me for offers. Look, I'm going to be very blunt. I am openly buying. Contact me. Alpha Investments LLC at Gmail. Pictures, prices. I'm not going to give you a great offer, but if you want cash, I'm buying. Okay? As they say, the show goes on. I'm staying the course. I'm buying. This stuff goes to zero, I will buy all the way down to zero, and you can put me on Wikipedia as the guy who bankrupted his own empire. I'm not leaving. I'm not changing. I'm not deviating. I don't care how much it drops. I'm staying the course, and I'm going to ride it to the ground. Don't care. But I'm here to let you all know, if you have old magic cards, like I used to tell you guys, if you have an Alpha Quad 9.5, 11.6... You're on your own. And you're in contact me. You want to sell some sort of beta mox sapphire. And you want $20,000 because you got these 9.5 subgrades. Good luck. I ain't touching it. Now, if you have raw cards 
in normal graded cards and you're willing to take realistic prices right now, contact me, Alpha Investments, LLC at Gmail. I have right now, as of the filming of this video, I have 38 collections of old school cards in transit to me right now with literally tracking showing inch on the move. And of course, I'm still buying. The show goes on. And I don't care if nobody else is... All right, let's, let's, let's hold on a second. Let me get my uh, my parody okay. video coming out right here in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. So you just saw Rudy, uh, this part of the video, talk about the show must go on. He's going to buy ungraded or reasonably priced graded cards if you send it to them. I think he had like 38 cards as of this video. Uh, collections are going to be sent to him. Uh, and he'll be start talking about giving you shipping labels. Shipping labels. Rudy is going to give you shipping labels to mail your damn cards to him so he can buy them at an incredibly low rate. We don't know what rate because the buy lists don't exist, apparently. Oh, yeah. Apparently, to the, according to Rudy, all the buy lists are gone. Now, I will say this about the buy lists. Here's what's going on. And I think Rudy understands. A lot of people understand. But here's the real my take information. In response, this stupid buy list system that has existed in Magic needs to go away. That's all I got to say about that. Buy lists are archaic. Buy lists are pointless. Buy lists should be gone. The main reason why they even existed was it was an easy way for people to sell cars at a percentage cost, essentially, as car, you know, cars, uh, stores need them. You know, it, it was an easy, like, price guy, right, in a way, for vendors to essentially get them at shows. It was, and they basically copied each other. In, in many ways, Card Kingdom... Uh, is usually the highest buy price compared to all the other companies. And they usually increase them about 10%. It's almost like they're mining each other's data and they're basically taking each other's data and upping the price or adjusting it. And also based on their own, own, own inventory too. I mean, maybe they have it so it's like, you know, they're looking at eBay. I'm not sure. But the, regardless of how it is, buy lists, I think, are a poor way to actually buy Magic cards. Here's the reason why. Number one, most buy lists, when you actually send them in, you're going to get a kickback, a phone call, something, uh, email, whatever, saying, hey, your condition of your cards are not correct. We're going to offer you this. Oh, uh, no, no, you, 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 you forgot to put this. Or, no, we have too much of this. Or, no, this price went up. Or, no, I'm sorry. When that's up, they're not going to say anything. But when it goes down, they're going to be like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Based on market conditions, we're not going to buy this card unless you give us, unless it's this cheap price, right? It's very low price. So when you already send the cards or the collection to a buy list, you're essentially already stuck with like, well, I need the money. I got bills to pay. What am I going to do? So you're at a position where it's really difficult. I think buy lists are also, to be honest, to be perfectly honest with you, it is shows why there's always room to make money in Magic the Gathering. That's true. It's laziness. It's laziness. A lot of people just want to sell it on buy lists, let the, the, the dealers make all, you know, do all the, the, the numbers or whatever, and then, hey, take your profits. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But it's lazy upon the, buy, the sellers or the, the sellers, the people with the collections, and because they, they just want to dump it. And that happens. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Every market, you people, you know, you have to understand there's fire sales, people that just want to sell their car. They want to sell their car because they need the money for something else. Well, they don't want to fix it anymore. Whatever, right? That happens. You might have foreclosures in houses. You have other, you know, knickknacks like DVDs or magazines or toys or whatever. That's why you have garage sales, pawn shops, whatever. You just sell them. But I think it's lazy because people oftentimes tell me, well, this vendor didn't actually uh, give me the best price. I saw on eBay that I can sell it for more if I did some work. That's right. If you did the work, you could actually make more money. And that's the problem with buy lists. It exploits and it shows that there is people out there that are willing to just, it's convenience. And that's okay. I'm not saying exploit as a bad thing. It's just the free marketplace. And you have to understand that as a seller of collections. Another thing that buy lists actually is good for is trade credit. A lot of people like to take one type of card and then go ahead and uh, get trade value to buy other type of cards. For example, some people have a, a really expensive older card 
and they might want to buy some cards for their commander deck, right? Or their pioneer deck, and that's fine. So that actually puts an advantage towards the buy, the, 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 the player who actually just wants to, hey, you know, I can trade one thing and get more money to buy cheaper cards. Now, here's the problem. The markup, the, the trade bonus and all that, actually, it, it, either way, remember, you may think you're getting double trade bonus from ABU games. Double. You're actually getting a lot less in the sense that when you get the trade, the multiplier, right, when they mark up the cards actually on the retail site, it's massive. You got to do more research. So the reality of it is you're not going to win either way. The only way you're going to win in this entire scenario is if you actually monitor cards, where they go, where they are, sell them yourself, you know, sell individually, reduce PayPal fees, you know, sell, you know, whatever, right? You have to maximize cost, you know, sales, but it's, it's really hard because that's more like a business, okay? So I don't, I don't think that that's a bad thing for consumers. I just think buy list itself as a whole, pricing changes too fast. The big thing is on eBay or whatever, you see prices change almost every single day, right? To the hour sometimes. And you'll notice that there's so many different items all the time on the completed sales. The reality is on the buy list, they don't change that fast. So when you go on the actual eBay or you look at items for sale currently on eBay or on the Facebook groups, whatever, you'll notice that prices are actually lower than buy list in many ways. So people take advantage of the buy list. It can offer lower or higher and exploit the mistakes on the buy list. For example, there's cases on buy list, right, where a vendor may not price something correct compared to eBay or a market to sell to an individual buyer or whatever. This gives an opportunity for the, the, the traders, the, you know, the, the people that are, don't have card shops, you know, people that don't have websites, people that are at the Grand Prix and Magic Festivals and are trying to sell out their cards. They can exploit and find buyers and sell them to vendors and try to get more money either way on each end. And that is a way for the buy list. That's why the buy list thing works for them. But it's scary. What Rudy is pointing out in this buy list debacle is now his only function of measuring, his only function, his main function was his buy list. He verbally says that I look at Star City Games buy list and, and, the, and, and I will give you uh, an offer based off that. I will match it or I'll beat it or, you know, or, or go a little bit less to be on condition. But that's what he did for a long time. But now that metric is gone. And so it's hard because he's freaking out because buy lists are the only way. Let's continue the video. All right, let's watch the video. See where we're at left off. The market's worth the crap. The pro Oops. prices have tanked. It doesn't matter. The amount of people selling compared to the amount of people actually buying. And I love this stuff. Well, people read. Really, uh, I've got this ten thousand dollar card. Uh, three months ago, there was a sold listing for eight thousand. Well, good luck. You should have sold three months ago. Because now you're going to be lucky to get 50 cents in the dollar. If you are willing to take today's low realistic prices and you want cash, you want me to give you your shipping call, I'll give you a shipping label, I'll cover your price, I'm buying. I have no limit. I'm going for it. I don't care. I'll take a HELOC out of my house. I'll max everything out. I don't care. I'm riding the ship to the ground. I will play the piano as the ship sinks. That's what I do. I will ride it. I'm not going anywhere. The show goes on, everybody. And I'm telling you all, it appears that most all the big stores around the country, they're all out. Everybody's temper. I don't know if it's going to be out for a week, a month, six months. I have no idea. These stores still have their buy list up. They're still taking orders. But all these old high-end cards, they're not touching them. Why? Because the prices are tanking. By the time people were submitting all these orders, I talked to one guy who worked. Well, I don't want to say where he worked. He worked at one of the, I'll give you a head, Channel Snowball, Card Castle, or uh, Moon City Games. He works at one of those. He's in the buying, pulling cards department for shipping and handling the incoming orders and the buy list orders that come in and matching it up. He says he's never seen anything like the amount of people sending old school cards and things. And guess what? No, what are they going to do? These companies with that over, they can't take all that product in when none of it is selling on the other side. And the falling knife is cutting them on the way down. So what's happening? Everybody pulled out. Once the first guy pulled his list off, the next guy pulled out. Card Kingdom pulled theirs. I guarantee Stuff we already power. know. Yes, the economy is bad. Alpha Beta Power pulled down. I bet all the prices are going to be pulled down. I'm telling you all right now, this is not bottomed out yet. 
The prices are going to not drop. bottom out. I said this a week ago, <laughs> a month ago, six months. It's going to crash, said, everybody. According to Messiah Rudy. Not only do we have a recession, Messiah. The worst 2020 Corona crash I've ever seen. Corona crash. And this thing ain't going to be over anytime soon. If you need capital, if you want to visit you've got a Sherry's Ranch brothel, everybody. And you want to sell them for pennies on the dollar? Well, not pennies, but 20 to 40 cents on the dollar. 20 to 40 cents? I'm here. I will make a market. Similar to what I did three years ago with Iconic Masters, and everybody made fun of me. When Iconic Masters went from 200 to 110, I was, if you want to sell, you want to sell them, dump them, unload your position. 20 to 40 cents on the dollar, people. I wanted the boxes. Are you listening to this crap? 130 a box. Period. Same thing. This is just nasty. But I wanted to make the video saying I was wrong. The liquidity was not accurate. All right. We're right back. All right, guys. Let me do my impression of what Rudy just said. You ready? Hey, guys. It's me. Rudy, listen to me. I know people out there aren't buying. I'm going to ride this shit until it sinks. I'm going to be right there with Rose, holding her arm in the iceberg, on the raft. You sell me your stuff. 20 to 40 cents on the dollar. So your $100 card, I will buy it for $20. I will make a market. I will take a HELOC. HELOC on my, my underpants. HELOC on my Alpha Investment t-shirts. I'm going to basically buy out everybody. Everybody. All the Serendipity Freaks. All the Juzan de Jins. Shit, I already have a million, a hundred, two hundred Arabia sets. Let's get like 500 more. Are you guys buying this BS? Who the hell is going to sell Rudy? 20 cents on the dollar. 20 cents on the dollar. 40 cents on the dollar. Okay. All right. Maybe if you're desperate. I want to tell you guys right off the bat. Go to VintageMagic.com. VintageMagic.com. And if you're in desperation mode, I will pay more than Rudy. In fact, Whatever Rudy offers, that's a legitimate offer that as long as the market hasn't tanked considerably on stone calendar, I will buy the stone calendars. Okay, I will buy them. 20 cents on the dollar. 20, I'll give you 21.699 to the cents of the dollar. I don't know what he's talking about. First off, let's talk, let's talk about this. Who the hell is gonna sell their old magic cards? Typically, people that sell their old magic cards are basically in desperation mode. There are people like that. There will be people like that. But selling it at 21 cents, to, 20 cents a dollar, 40 cents a dollar, you might as well eBay, your, eBay yourself. Fuck the buy list. Forget the buy list. Buy list suck. Don't sell the buy list. Sell it to me. Sell it on a Facebook group. Do some work. If you need the money, do it. Now, I got it. What Rudy's doing is the Pawn Stars approach. He's doing the Pawn Rudy is the Pawn Stars. He is Rick Harrison. Rudy is Rick Harrison of Magic the Gathering. He's trying to develop an old school like buzz that is basically going to fail. It's like Rick Harrison, like, oh no, 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 this shit is cheap and I gotta make money. I got overhead. I got my basement, I got my mom, my, my dad, I gotta help them out, I gotta pay, I gotta pay rent in my basement. That's the Pawn Stars approach. Don't buy it, it's BS. Let's continue watching the BS of this part of it. All right, guys, let's continue this BS approach. Let's do it. The liquidity thing was wrong. Because I never, ever, in a million years, ever thought I would see the day where I would go online, and I got a collection in this morning, and I'm going through it, had an Arabian Nights set, Antiquity set, a bunch of Unlimited, one Beta Dual Land, a Beta Power Card. I go online to check the Star City... The card came down. I take all the prices and I take the average, and that's the offer I was going to make. And guess what? Everything was removed. The only thing they had were some of the modern standard Pioneer cards. And I was like, all the prices are gone. I was like, oh my God. Everybody is backed out. Nobody is buying the vintage cards. And it was like just this moment for me. And that is where we are. That's 2020. That is what's happened. If you can weather the storm and you guys don't need the money, do not sell. Wait for about two, three, four, five years. You've got to wait. If you need money within the next 12 months, Alpha Investments LLC at gmail.com. I will contact you. We'll get an approximate price range. And you know what? I'll give you a shipping label. 
We'll make it happen. We'll even make a video. Share your story with the world. Show your collection so you can live down in infamy. And you know what? It is what it is. That's where we are today, folks. Um, if you don't need the money. Shipping label, everybody. Keep your cards. But just understand. Keep your cards. Keep your cards. These things aren't going to go back up. But I'll pay you 20 cents to a dollar. For turbulent and I'll give you a massage. And we're going to stay the course. I ain't leaving. The show goes on. And you know what? You guys are going to see a lot of collection videos. Well, assuming the people selling are giving me permission to make a video on their collection. Maybe you won't see a lot of collection. A lot of people don't want, especially certain cards or certain graded ones or certain seal numbers that can be matched who had them. They don't want to be shown on here because they don't want to, they don't want to really show the losses or what happened to them. So maybe, I don't know. I'll do the best I can to see how many people will want me to show you guys the collections, get a feel for what's going on. But that's it. That's what's going on. Um, so yeah, until further notice, um, Normally, I'm matching the bios pricing, covering your shipping costs. Um, we're just going to have to kind of estimate based on pretty much how I feel the market. Please give me uh, 6 to 12 hours, up to 24 hours to reply to you. Uh, I'm doing the best I can to reply to everybody. If you have vintage cards, I'm interested, contact me. If you have sealed boxes. If you have cards, underwear by Daniel Chang, I will wear it in the next freaking video. Contact me. Contact me. 100 boxes of Dragon's Maze. I will give you 10 shipping labels. I will buy them. Alpha and, and, LLC, and, and some LLC. spaghetti. The show goes on. Stay the course. I don't Let's finish this video right. All right, guys. In conclusion to Rudy's video, I hope you guys were entertained. I hope you learned something. Yes, I will rate this video. I will rate Rudy's video. I'm going to rate everybody's video that I do. I think the rating on this video in terms of accuracy in combination with all the details i probably give it like a C, just average. And here's the problem. The problem with Rudy's video is he's hitting towards desperation mode, people. People that are desperate to sell their items. That's why he's willing to pay 20 cents to 40 cents on the dollar. By the way, if you are desperate and you are selling to Rudy and you're watching this video, I will pay more than Rudy. In fact, I will sell it on eBay for you. Basically at cost plus 5%. I'll just say 20% eBay fee. 20%. That includes eBay, PayPal, shipping, all that stuff, my time, everything. 20% for all your damn items that you want to sell. I'm not going to just sell a dollar cards, but I will sell boxes, high-end cards, whatever. So you don't feel like you're getting 20 cents to a dollar. So let me explain something to you. If you research on eBay and they're basically, you know, they're basically saying, okay, uh, yeah, the items sell for about $100 plus or minus. Rudy's offering $20 to $40. If you lose $20, $20 from me because of the fee or, uh, you know, our, our, our percentage, our commission, right? It's consignment essentially. Then you basically make, get $80. Sounds like a no-brainer. Rudy is basically talking to desperation mode. That's too desperate, people. The people that are desperate, I'm going to help you guys out. I'll give you a free consultation, free appraisal, whatever the hell you want. I obviously can't meet you, can't fly, but I will help you out. Now, that's the problem. Rudy's video gets a C grade because of desperation. And the reality of this entire thing is there's desperate people, desperate times, desperate measures, right? And I understand that. But I don't think that's what the reality of the market is. A lot of people buy on Facebook, eBay, TCG Player. TCG Player, hello, it's a big marketplace. There's a lot of marketplaces other than Star City Game Buy List, ABU Games Buy List, and a Card Kingdom. That's a poor way. And he even said he averages in them out. Fine. But the problem with this is that it's just a little price guide that's always behind. And now he's afraid. He's afraid because he's going to be paying way too much because the market's going to keep tanking, like he says. So he's going to offer you well below the average. If a buy list average, if there's pricing, was available. Like the Alpha Lotus one was anywhere from 44K mint to 35K, whatever, right? Something like that. Rudy will probably offer you 25K, 20K, right? Way less than buy list. Main reason why, well, because he doesn't want to take the risk. 
He's not the best choice. And if you have the time, you have the effort, you actually need, you actually give yourself a little time, you'll be able to make more out of it for your family, your friends, you know, whoever you're helping to sell, it, it, it's a better deal. So if you're desperate, you need help, contact me, vintagemagic.com. Go to contact us. I will help you. I'm telling this, Rudy, I don't have no problem with Rudy at all. Rudy, I know Rudy's probably watching this. I have no problem with Rudy at all. The problem I have here in the, his message, and that's why you got a C grade, not an A plus or an A. That's a very tough grade to get. I don't think I'm ever going to get an A for anybody. Maybe, maybe MTG Lion. Just kidding. But reality is, I want you to know that he didn't get the better grade out of it because it's completely inaccurate towards many different markets. Another thing I want to tell you guys. This is the probably the most the, the one of the biggest parts that I think he doesn't understand. No offense to Rudy. Rudy doesn't sell high-end cards. If you notice, he sells on his Patreon, sealed product, new stuff. Yeah, he has an eBay store. He, he, he blows up the prices to a million dollars for like 100 Arabian sets or 2 million. I don't know what it has. It, he doesn't want to sell it. He wants to keep it and hoard it, invest in it, whatever, right? He doesn't actively sell those cards. I don't, I don't buy that. Would you, rather de- would you rather listen to advice from someone that actually sells the cards? I'm not just saying myself. There's lots of other dealers, vendors out there in the world, the Magic Fest, that sell high-end cards every single day. Rudy doesn't sell anything about that. He doesn't sell the graded cards, doesn't sell anything. He offers on an eBay store, but it doesn't actually sell. And that's the problem. Rudy is unaware of what it takes to sell those cards. He doesn't know the strategies, the investment strategies. So that's right. You should talk to a licensed financial advisor in high-end cards. Hmm, who is that? Who is, who is that person? I don't know. But whoever you choose, you can contact me. Free appraisal, free consultation during this C-word mess. Just contact me. Don't bother contacting him and get false advice. In fact, contact him and then contact me. Get two advices. But I'm telling you, you're going to listen to my advice here. Do not sell yourself cheap. Sell for a higher price. Rudy is is pulling off the desperation card. It's worthy. Well played, well played. If you fell for it, well, you're desperate. But he said also his video. If you want a video, you're right. He has 200,000 some subscribers. I have like 14,000 subscribers. You're right. My video will not be as famous as your video. But would you rather make more money or would you rather have a video that just watch and you know, there's basically commented a thousand times. What's going to get you more in your money? What's going to help you right now? Money, food, shelter, or some guy ranting about 20 cents to the dollar? Give me a freaking break. Hey everyone, it's Daniel Chang with VintageMagic.com. In this video, I want to run through our consultation service on VintageMagic.com. So what's really exciting to me about the consultation process is meeting you. I've met so many incredible people in the Magic the Gathering industry um, all over the world. And this consultation process is the key part to a successful working relationship. Getting hold of me is very simple. You could call or email me. We'll talk more about your needs. From all that information I gather in our call, typically about an hour long, I'm going to determine the best solution for you. So because we have such a suite of services that we offer, I'm gonna sit down with a follow-up call and then we're gonna go off and determine what the best path is. I have experience in handling conversations in regards to large clutches of artwork, uh, sets of cards, either if it's graded or ungraded, um, raw cards. Um, I also have dealt with collections with lots of misprints and oddities. Altered cards, sketch cards, and uh, artist proofs are also one of my specialties. My experience in Magic Gathering has gone to any level of collecting you may have. I look forward to working with you. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. Thank you everyone for joining me. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I'm excited to share more about our appraisal services. All right, so the first step of the appraisal process is determining if your items are authentic. After determining that the items are authentic, we will then do a market evaluation of your items. So oftentimes, clients ask me, 
hey Dan, I want to insure my collectibles. Well, after the authenticity and evaluation part of the appraisal process, I would then construct an official letter and we would send that off to the insurance company. Your insurance provider would then offer you insurance based on the valuations and authenticity. We also offer pre-grading services. So collectors who are looking to save money on grading um, can go through us. We will actually grade and authenticate the cards before you send it off to grading and that will save you potentially thousands of dollars on grading fees. Also, we offer estate collection services. So basically, if you've acquired a collection over the years, either from a family member or yourself, and you wanna pass it down to your, uh, your kids, uh, we're able to determine valuations based on the levels of today. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit vintagemagic.com. Hey everyone, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I want to share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally, consigners usually tell me, hey Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And in the appraisal process, in terms of a consignment, is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. Hey guys, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. Today I want to talk to you more about our artist representation services. If you have a portfolio of artists that you're looking for a commission, artist proofs, alters, signings, we are the one-stop shop you need. No one in the world has handled more important and rare Magic the Gathering art than myself. I've worked with some of the most iconic Magic the Gathering artists in working to acquire their original Magic art. The Artist Representation Service at VintageMagic.com is a one-stop shop. Being an art collector myself, I know how important it is that your time needs to be saved. What happens is you have lots of different artists around the world to manage and contact. Why not have a company represent you on every single artist that you speak to? This way, every single commission, every artist proof, every altar, every signing is managed as a one-stop shop. I've had tremendous experience in working with Magic the Gathering artists all over the world. And I look forward to helping you complete your Magic the Gathering art collection. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.